We're going into chapter 11, The Negotiator of Never Caught, um, the Ona Judge story. So remember, George was in the process of retiring as president, and he was getting ready to shift to John Adams's administration. While he was preparing to retire, he picked up a hobby, slave catching, because he knew where Ona was now. And he was like, okay, so I'm still going to get her because, you know, she shouldn't have ran away. But he had to be discreet because, believe it or not, he knew he he wrote the laws. He knew he had to obey the laws, but he was willing to break them. But he had to be delicate about it because he actually cared more about people's perception of him than more than anything. And at this time, runaway slaves reminded Americans that slaves were more than property. They were human beings. No matter how well kept they were, an enslaved African would always choose freedom over frivolous, meaningless, and false luxuries of slavery. And that's not how property usually acts. Thanks to owner running away, George had now switched to indentured servants. You know, the white folks who actually willfully chose enslavement, but also were able to get their freedom at the end of their servitude. And he only traveled with the frail slaves who were too weak to run away but strong enough to still work. Martha with her petty self was still a major factor into Georgia's pursuit of getting Ona because she had promised her granddaughter that she would get Ona. George wanted Ona captured so bad he enlisted the federal government to help capture. Y'all this is one slave. One. The secretary of treasury was in on it. Him and George would write letters back and forth about how they was going to go about doing this. And every time George wrote a letter, he got pissed. He was like, I was treating you nice. I fed you. I clothed you. I put you in a house. What more do you want? Why you want your freedom? As he wrote about honor, he called her trifling and ungrateful. Be mindful of the words y'all be using about other black people. I'm telling you, you sounded kind of slaveholderish. He even made up this theory that Ona couldn't have came up with the idea to escape by herself. She needed a man to do it, which that wasn't the case. Be careful. One of the most dangerous places for black people is in white folks' imagination. George was like, look, I got these different strategies. I don't care if it breaks the law. I signed them. George knew that the Fugitive Slave Act of 1793 uh, required that captured slaves be brought in front of a a judge. But George was like, hell no, ain't no judge. And to prove uh, the identification of Ona, he was going to enlist Elizabeth Langdon to prove that this, in fact, is Ona. And then he was going to put on a ship without her even having to go. Part of the reason behind all this, too, is because George was still broke. Could you imagine Martha having all the money and not giving George nothing? I'm just saying, girl. That's your man. And you're supposed to stick beside him. You're going to stick beside him. That's yours. George didn't care how much it cost. And he didn't care if he was going to break the laws that he signed. He was determined to get on her. So then he enlisted this custom collector by the name of John Whipple, uh, who also owned slaves. But he freed them um, after they served in the revolution, uh, the American Revolution. He wasn't quite an abolitionist. He was just slightly into freeing some black people. Whipple began um, searching for Ona, but he did it under the guise of, oh, his wife is looking for domestic work uh, in the house and, you know, they're high in society. And Ona, word had gotten back to Ona and Ona was like, yeah, I'm used to this. You know, this might be my little come up. So she agreed to meet up with Mr. Whipple. Child, Whipple knew he met Ona. But Anna didn't realize his intentions until he let it slip about this mysterious boyfriend that George alleged she had. Whipple was like, oh, snap. I let it slip. And he came clean about his intentions to Anna. He, like all the others, asked her, why would you run away? You had it good, girl. And then Anna realized, oh, he's not trying to forcefully bring me back. He's trying to talk me into coming back. And he tried to negotiate. But Anna said, under no circumstance. Well, I go back. I'm not going to be sold nor given to anybody. I am free. Ona realized she had him. And so um, when he started negotiating, probably being free, um, after George died, she played along and was like, sure, I'll show up. But then he showed up at the docks the next next night thinking that he was going to bring Ona and she never showed. Like, duh. 
So he wrote George about what happened and he tried to sell like Ona's doing like great things and she's this nice person and she's willing. And But uh, he tried to negotiate the freedom and George was like, hell no, she don't get to be free. And Whipple tried to exclude himself from it. But George was like, no, you're not. You're going to help me find her. While I focus on shifting the presidency to John Adams. 